Now what we were actually doing out here in Oakland was checking out the Mark II in person and got a chance to test drive it before it goes back to the lab for its next set of upgrades. This is the upgraded concept, which is slated to be faster, more powerful, and of course, feature a giant eagle rocking sunglasses. So big shout out to Matt and Guy, the masterminds behind Megabots for letting me check it out early. And I'll also drop a link down below if you wanna check out more info on this crazy 12,000 pound robot. Out the Megabot, the Megabot, a Megabot, just Megabot? Yeah. Sure. Uh, the Megabot is the first prototype that the company name, Megabots, uh, has created. So this is actually a company where we're creating giant fighting robots. Um, and this is the kind of the world premiere of our first full-scale mobile two people sits inside of it uh, Megabot. So you guys played a lot of Mech Warrior that's, growing up. That's that's correct. Okay. That's like Mech Warrior 2 onwards all the way through Mech Warrior Online. Um, what's the goal with, with the Megabots? Are you trying to make killer death robots, or are you making entertainment death robots? Yeah, so, so both. Uh, basically, the idea is the long-term vision is we're making a giant robot sports league. So we want people to go to stadiums and see walking versions of these guys playing a giant game of paintball, blowing off armor panels, like <laughs> limbs falling off. It should look like live-action mech Game Eight-wheel drive. 19 liter Cummins, 600 horsepower engine in the rear. Built in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Now at home at the Austin Agricultural Museum in Austin, Manitoba. Warrior on a playing field with walking humanoids that are 15 feet tall, this, piloted by two people. This is a dream I can get behind. <laughs> two, uh, two people in the cockpit? Uh, the person in the front is the gunner, and the person in the back is the driver. Uh, typically in like Mech Warrior, you have one person doing both of those roles, and we found that like when we were playing those games, a lot of times you turn the torso sideways, and then you keep walking, and you're not really paying attention to where the mech is walking, and you run into all kinds of buildings and other players and stuff like that. So we wanted to separate those two roles so that each person could focus on those specific roles so that's why we divided it up um, the person in the back can't see out that well so we've attached cameras to the base of the robot so the person in the back is actually looking at these monitors as they steer the robot and the person in the front is placing the guns and, and firing them so what's the basis for the robot it looks like it looks like you have like tank treads almost like on a bobcat or a caterpillar front end loader or something like that yeah so we hold the treads off of a cat 289c skid steer mm -hmm. um, and then attach them to our own custom frame and built the leg mechanisms uh, from scratch and attach them to the torso through a slew gear that you might see on a, or a slew, slew bearing you might see on an excavator. Um, so then, how how do you build go about building like controls for stuff like this? Are you are you do, using like off the shelf microcontrollers? You doing all custom stuff? Um, so the controls uh, is 
actually uh, like there's a valve stack ups that we got from Danfoss. So um, they're just like proportional spool valves for the hydraulics. Those are controlled by a can open enabled uh, can controller that Miratron makes. And then there's actually a laptop in there that talks over the can. Valve.